All right, guys, so I've wanted to get into loading my own ammo for quite a while now, and I figured that if I didn't just jump in and buy something, that I would never actually end up doing it. So we ended up just buying a press so that I'm officially, like, involved in it, and I can't stop at this point. So without further ado, let's crack into the box here. So as you probably read in the title already, this is the Lee Breach Lock Challenger Press. And I don't think there's an invoice in here luckily. Maybe it's in here so I'll have to be careful about that. But here you can see it's actually a much smaller box than I thought it would be. And it's stapled at the top so we'll just try to pull these two out. And then I'll flip over the box and realize that there was a totally easier way to get into it probably. but. That's just me, I guess. Sorry about that, guys. My battery cut off in the middle of me opening this. So now I'm just going to start dumping out the contents of the box. And by the way, no, there wasn't an easier way to open this. It's stapled on both sides, which I guess is actually a good thing, just so that nothing could really be, like, stolen out of the box or anything. So here's everything. I'm going to take out this little cardboard... Um, divider thing. We've got our instruction manual. Honestly, I'd rather watch videos online of how to do this just because they're so much more instructional than these manuals usually are, but you could probably get by with just this. So here's the main body of the press. It's got a little cardboard thing protecting the RAM. We've got a tube, not quite sure what that's for, so I'll have to look in the manual. So I guess that is kind of handy after all. We've got our handle, this one has a wood ball. I think all models, or all versions of this press will come with that, but some of the nicer ones do have like a crank handle that you hold down here and it just rotates in your hand, which I think would be more ergonomic than this. So I'd assume you can probably order that off of Lee's website if you wanted to. Then I might actually end up doing that. And here we've just got a bag of all of our accessories and mounting hardware and stuff. So we'll go through this step by step. So first of all, there's this, because this is a breech lock press, which means you can swap in these little um, collets here. And you just pop it in and rotate it over. It's kind of hard to do without a die in there. And you just rotate it all the way until this pin pops back up. And then you can push that down. Of course, you would actually have a die in here. And you could rotate it back over. And pull it out. And you could put a new one in with a different die in it. So that way you don't have to recalibrate your dies each time you need to change it. And just over here we've got a bunch of hardware. This is just another piece of paper, I'd assume, to insulate the things from being scratched. We've got this little metal plate which it looks like that's going to go right here to catch your primers which I think I figured out what this tube goes to I think you pop it on right there and you can use that to channel your primers down this and send them into a bucket I mean that's got to be what that's for otherwise I just invented a totally new use for it so that goes on here with this screw and then we've got this cap, which looks like it might cover this. I'm not entirely sure. We've got our two primer seaters, so for small and large primers, obviously. And here's our mounting hardware to put the handle onto the um, press. So I guess I am actually going to read the manual and figure out how to put this all together and I'll come back to you in just a second. Alright guys, so I figured out how to install that handle, but first let me correct one thing. Turns out that this little cap is actually for going on top of this tube here. And you can see that you just push that on like that. And then you put this on like I showed you, because I was correct about that at least. And then the primers just fall in here and it catches them here. Of course you still could leave this off and just put a bucket below it, like I said, if you wanted to just catch them all in like a bucket or a garbage can or something. So I mean, either way works really. 
And then also, I'm going to go over these two things first. So, like I said, these are your primer seeders. So I'm just going to take one of them. I don't even know which one this is. And you install it by just putting the ram all the way up. Or not really all the way, it doesn't matter. But then you just got to seat it across that little bar you can see in there. So just push it in and drop it down. And you can see it falls out like that. You would put your primer in there. Of course with the casing in there. And then when you lower it, it rams it up into the casing. And then it goes like that. And you can see how it functions. And then of course if you switch from loading large primers to small, all you got to do is lift it out and put the other one in. So now on to that handle. So what you got to do first is just put the rod through this bar. And then you just slot it in. This works for both sides, so it works depending on whether you're left or right handed. And you can just slot it in there. And the manual says that you're supposed to line up the bar with these little notches here. As you can see, there's two of them where I just put it in. But I don't think you'd have a problem if you put it in on these other ones where it doesn't line up. Just as long as you make sure it stays clear of all these bolts and stuff. And also, as long as you tighten it enough so that it won't slip and slide. But just for the sake of this video, I'm going to put it in the straight way. And then once I've got it mounted to my um, table, I'll figure out how it needs to actually be to be most comfortable. So you put that in, and then you just put your bolt and your washer on. I didn't check, but I'd assume that this edge that's slightly more rounded faces the outside. So you just tighten this on there. You need some sort of wrench to get it on there real tight, but just for an example, you can see that that's how that goes on there. And then you would drill your three mounting holes and put, I don't know, either lag bolts or just regular bolts with a nut on the other side. And you would mount it to a nice, thick, solid bench. And that's a perfect example of why you need to have this on there tighter than what I did. But, and then you can just see how this works. It's pretty simple. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably know at least a little bit of how to use a reloading press. And if you don't, then like I said, there's lots of tutorials here on YouTube. Which is the great thing about it. I mean, you can pretty much learn almost anything at this point off of YouTube. So, it's really great what's been built on here. But anyways, that's the unboxing of the Lee Breech Lock Challenger Press, and that's how you assemble it for the most part. And at some point I'll make a video of me actually using this, maybe an installation guide of me actually putting it on the desk, I'm not really sure yet. But for this video, I think that's about all we're going to cover. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to click the like button as it does help me out. Also, leave me a comment about anything that I did well at, or anything that I could improve. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please do click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.